I'm recording this just a few days after the Russian army, under the leadership of Vladimir Putin, has invaded the nation of Ukraine and is now outside its capital city of Kiev. Now, the course of history is always unpredictable, so I have no idea how any of this is going to turn out. Honestly, it's hard to imagine a definitive victory for either side at this point. And as for how this might expand or draw in other nations or players or, or what unforeseen consequences will come from it, well, I guess that's why they call them unforeseen. But at this particular moment, Ukrainian forces under the leadership of Zelensky are resisting rather fiercely. They're shooting down Russian aircraft. They're ambushing and destroying Russian armored infantry columns. And when Biden offered to evacuate Zelensky, he said, I need ammo, not a ride. Now, as the world watches, we're all sort of impressed by their resistance. But it raises an interesting question. Are the Ukrainians fighting a just war? Now, Pope Francis and the Catholic bishops are rightly calling us all to pray for peace. I mean, absolutely, of course. We should pray for a peaceful outcome. But does that mean that the Ukrainians ought to lay down their arms, stop ambushing Russian tanks and soldiers? Are the Ukrainians just supposed to let Putin seize their nation? So what exactly should we be praying for? A mere cessation of hostilities or for victory for one side? Should the Ukrainians accept an unjust peace? Or should we just be praying for justice? which might require violence to achieve it. Now, the Pope and our bishops have, so far, been silent on this particular point. But they don't have to be, because for at least 16 centuries, the doctrines of the Catholic Church have allowed for morally justified warfare. In fact, the Church has official criteria for what constitutes a just war. It's called just war doctrine. So, instead of praying for both sides to just lay down arms and talk, which would be a good thing, should we maybe pray that the Ukrainian resistance is victorious? Look, this seems like a good time to review Catholic just war doctrine and ask if it applies to the conflict in Ukraine. Let's begin where we always must begin, God's Word. The Old Testament law is summarized in two great commandments. Deuteronomy 6.5, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And Leviticus 19.18, you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, when Jesus was asked which is the greatest of all the commandments, he quoted these two verses. So, as Christians, our arguments and our rationales must always begin and end with love. First, genuine love of God, and then genuine love of others. But, to love is also to love justice, even when it's hard. That's the bedrock principle on which our whole faith is built. Jesus died on a cross to set us free by satisfying God's justice. And loving our neighbors sometimes means doing the right thing for them, even when it's unpleasant. That's the entire basis of our criminal justice system, as well as our welfare or charitable systems. Because sometimes justice requires policing, and sometimes it requires punishment. And sometimes justice demands us helping those in need. In Romans chapter 13, St. Paul instructs us to obey legitimate government authorities when they protect justice. St. Paul says, For rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. So, while we should always seek peace, we should seek a just peace. Loving our neighbors does not mean ignoring grave injustices. Now, the bishops, popes, and theologians of the early church never disputed any of this, even when it came to the Roman army if they were defending a just peace. 
In the 5th century, St. Augustine, that great doctor of the church, articulated what we have come to call just war doctrine. In 418, he wrote that peace should be the object of your desire. War should be waged only as a necessity in order that peace may be obtained. Therefore, even in waging a war, cherish the spirit of a peacemaker that by conquering those whom you attack, you may lead them back to the advantages of peace. As violence is used toward him who rebels and resists, so mercy is due to the vanquished or the captive. Now, over the centuries, other Catholic theologians developed the church's just war doctrines. In the midst of near constant medieval warfare, St. Thomas Aquinas laid out specific criteria for whether a war, both offensive and defensive, could be considered justified and for how combatants should conduct themselves during a war. Just war theory is a whole category of moral theology with far too many writers and nuances to explain here. So instead, let's focus on two official statements from the Catholic Church that articulate her doctrine for just warfare. First, in the 1960s, the Second Vatican Council, which was a gathering of all the world's bishops, decreed that governments cannot be denied the right to legitimate defense once every means of peaceful settlement has been exhausted. State authorities and others who share public responsibility have the duty to conduct such grave matters soberly and to protect the welfare of the people entrusted to their care. Let's stop there for a moment. I think there can be little doubt that the Ukrainians, whatever else their faults, because like every nation and government, I'm sure they have their unsavory elements, have exhausted every means of peaceful settlement other than surrendering their nation to Vladimir Putin. And as near as I can tell from news reports, they are conducting themselves soberly and protecting the welfare of the people entrusted to their care as best as possible without handing their homes over to the Russians. The bishops of Vatican II continued, It is one thing to undertake military action for the just defense of the people, and something else again to seek the subjugation of other nations. See, that clearly indicts the Russians for starting this war. But the Vatican II bishops also issued a reminder that the mere fact that war has unhappily begun does not mean that all is fair between the warring parties. So, even if the reason for a war is just, it doesn't justify committing war crimes. Now, as of yet, nothing like that has been reported on either side. But, as we know, war often unleashes the worst elements of our humanity, and retributions and atrocities are possible. If we pray for a just victory, we must also pray for just conduct during the war. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, which is the official summary of the Church's doctrines, outlines four specific criteria that must be met for a war to be considered justified. First, the damage inflicted by the aggressor on the nation or community of nations must be lasting, grave, and certain. So temporary provocations and skirmishes don't justify launching all-out invasions. Two, all other means of putting an end to it must have been shown to be impractical or ineffective. So we must have exhausted diplomatic solutions and reasonable compromises. Three, there must be serious prospects of success. This is often overlooked when we're talking about just war theory. Should leaders plunge their nations into a ruinous loss if victory is impossible? Or should they, at times, accept temporary defeat and let their people live the fight another day? And four, the use of arms must not produce evils and disorders graver than the evil to be eliminated. Now, this is a frightening possibility with nuclear or biological weapons that could do more damage than the original conflict did. 
Let's apply these criteria to what we know about the war in Ukraine, at least based on media reports as of February 28, 2022. It seems clear that, in the words of Vatican II, Russia is seeking the subjugation of another nation. Ukraine and Russia have ethnic, religious, and cultural ties going back more than a thousand years. But Putin's claims that Ukraine belongs to Russia is historically absurd and a clear violation of international law. And it seems clear that the Ukrainians have been forced to undertake military action for the just defense of their people. By Vatican II standards, Putin's war is unjust and the Ukrainian defense is just. Now let's go down that checklist in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Russia is inflicting damage on the Ukraine and her citizens in a way that is lasting, grave, and certain. All other means of avoiding this conflict proved impractical and ineffective. Diplomacy didn't work. Sanctions didn't work. Putin made it clear that he would accept nothing but the Ukrainian people surrendering their nation to Russia. Is there a serious prospect of success? I don't know. Is Zelensky leading his people in a futile gesture that's just going to bring more ruin on the nation? That's not clear. But the Ukrainians may make Putin pay such a high cost that he's forced to the negotiating table or lead a resistance that at some point in the future forces the Russians to have to pull out, just like the Russians and Americans were forced to leave Afghanistan. Will the use of arms produce evils and disorders graver than the evil to be eliminated? That's not clear. We certainly pray that this doesn't escalate and draw other nations into a world war or that the Ukrainian resistance doesn't resort to war crimes or retributions on Russian soldiers or Ukrainians of Russian descent. Those kinds of grave evils and disorders happen far too frequently for us to dismiss the possibility that they could happen here. Therefore, based on the doctrines of the Catholic Church, I think we can conclude that the Ukrainians appear to be fighting a just war against an unjust aggressor. Now, obviously that could change if the Ukrainian resistance responds with atrocities or something, but that hasn't happened yet. So, why aren't the bishops of the Catholic Church, including the Bishop of Rome, the Pope, taking a side in this conflict? Why aren't they urging us to pray for a Ukrainian victory to win a just peace? Well, I certainly don't speak for any bishops, much less a Pope. But I think there are at least five reasons. First, in modern times, the church has been reluctant to call for violence, even in just wars. While the church lays out the moral theology for a just war, it leaves the actual decisions of war or peace where they rightly belong with legitimate government authorities. And it leaves it to us, in our capacity as citizens, to participate in political processes to influence those decisions of war and peace. So, as Catholic citizens, we may wish for a Ukrainian victory, but don't expect the Pope to lead prayers for ambushes on Russian tanks. Second, too much about all of this is unknown. What if the church declares this a just war and tomorrow we discover that Ukrainian patriots are committing atrocities on captured Russian soldiers or ethnic Russians? How does the church walk that one back? Third, because the church is Catholic, meaning that it's universal, there are Catholics living in both Russia and the Ukraine. And the church has complex relationships with the Orthodox Christians and their leaders in both countries. If the Pope advocated for specific political or military outcomes, he could bring reprisals on those Christians and their churches. Fourth, the Holy See, the Vatican, is not only a religious organization, it is an independent nation-state itself, but one without an army or air force for defense. The Vatican must be a vocal moral conscience on the world stage, but it must also operate diplomatically, 
It has embassies and ambassadors in both countries, and it needs to keep those relationships open to protect Catholics from possible persecutions. Finally, we have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. During World War II, Pope Pius XII was criticized for not making more public statements about Hitler and the war. But only years later did we learn that he was actually using the church's network's neutrality to secretly smuggle Jews out of Germany and aid the resistance. They aren't going to tell us whatever they might be secretly doing in the Ukraine because, well, it's secret. So, to conclude, based on the doctrines of the Catholic Church, I believe that we are right to conclude that the Ukrainians are fighting a just war. They may utilize violence to repel military forces, but they must avoid atrocities against Russian soldiers and reprisals against any ethnic Russians living in Ukraine. As Catholics, we can support them and pray not only for peace, but a just outcome that preserves their homes, their people, and their nation from Russian invasion. But don't hold your breath waiting for the popes and bishops to come out and say exactly that. Thank you.